Hello, Cell and Genetic Biology 230. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford, an assistant professor at Tuskegee University. And we are wrapping up Unit 2, Chapter 7. And the concept that we're covering today is bulk transport. Bulk transport across the plasma membrane occurs by exocytosis and endocytosis. Large molecules, such as polysaccharides, they cross the plasma membrane in bulk. They do this via vesicles. Now, you think of bulk, what do you think of? I think of Sam's Club, I think of Costco, because it's at these stores where you buy things in large quantities. So that's how I want you to think about bulk transport into a cell or out of a cell. It's the transport of more than one solute, more than one uh, ion, more than one thing. It's being transported across the membrane. And with bulk transport, it requires some energy source. Now let's look and compare exocytosis to endocytosis. Exocytosis, exiting, leaving, the cell, if you will. So in exocytosis, transport vesicles, they migrate and fuse with the membrane. And when they do that, they release their contents. This is exocytosis. Many secretory proteins exit a cell in this way. Endocytosis, on the other hand, is coming into a cell. Endocytosis. Cyto means cell. Okay? Cyto cell. Endocytosis. In endocytosis, a cell takes in macromolecules by forming vesicles, see, from the plasma membrane. Endocytosis. So now things are coming into a cell. These macromolecules are coming into a cell. There are three types of endocytosis. There is phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Phagocytosis is often seen as cellular eating, if you will. So it's as if the cell, endocytosis, things are coming into the cell. The cell is eating some solid particle, if you will. Penocytosis has to do with cellular drink, associated with cellular drinking, if you will. The general movement of an ion in this case, or something within this extracellular fluid is coming into the cell. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is more specific, okay? Because on the plasma membrane, there are receptors, and remember these receptors have specific binding sites. So only this star-shaped solute or molecule or ion will bind to this green receptor on this plasma membrane. And when that happens, it comes into the cell. That's the signal that says, okay, let's go in the cell. So this, these are three different types of endocytosis, and the receptor-mediated endocytosis is specific. The penocytosis is more general. So by now, after viewing all of these, these lectures in Chapter 6 and Chapter 7, um, with Chapter 7, you should now be able to define amphipathic, aquaporin, diffusion. You should be able to explain how membrane fluidity is influenced by both temperature and membrane composition. You should be able to distinguish between the following terms, peripheral and integral proteins, membrane proteins. How are they different? Channel and carrier proteins, how do they differ? Osmosis facilitated diffusion, active transport, simple diffusion, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions, 
and she, you should be able to discuss and, and talk about osmosis and the movement of water in plant cells as well as in animal cells. You should also be able to explain how transport proteins facilitate diffusion. You should be able to explain how electrogenic pumps create voltage across a membrane. You should be able to at least name one type of electrogenic pump. You should be able to explain how large molecules, how they're transported across a cell membrane.